ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी सिंपल टॉपिक बट येट अ डीप वन दैट्स आई कैन इज इट नॉट एफ आई थैंक यू थैंक यू सो एंड द नेम ऑफ दिस सेवन टॉपिक लाइक इज वॉट इज कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस सिंपल not that great but we have to understand in proper perspective what do we mean by this word krishna consciousness uh, which prabhupad gave us he named the movement on this very word krishna consciousness prabhupad when he began his movement he wanted to name the movement god consciousness he came to west he saw you know, people are this will be like Like a sectarian or whatever, Prabhupada was thinking. But then, uh, but then he thought about it and he changed into Krishna consciousness. So this, from where this word is, he has derived this word. There has to be some evidence, you know, from somewhere he has got this word. And what does it mean for all of us who are practicing Krishna consciousness? What is the practical implications of this word that I have to discuss today? Ah, yeah. So before that, Om Ajnana Timaranda Se Ajnana Jana Shalake Chakshurun Milita Mena Tasmaya Shri Guru Venama Nama Om Vishnu Pada Ya Krishna Prashtha Ya Bhuta De Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Mati Nama Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaurvani Pracharya Nirvisheshu Nevadu Pashatishtha. Okay, one thing I just wanted to, by the way, just not connected to this topic. this uh, so we sing uh, uh, yamuna tira vanachari actually that's not yamuna tira that is yamuna tira uh, that is yamuna not yamuna because it makes all difference because the father of yamuna devi is yam yam yamraj so yamraj has uh, yamraj is himself son of suradev so lord sun god he has one son one daughter one is yamraj and one is so uh, so he, so is related to uh, yamuna devi is related to yamraj ji so she is called yamuna belonging to him that's how it goes it's not yamuna then doesn't it doesn't make any sense like that just like kunti and kaunte like that so it changes there yam yam sun god's name is also called yam sun is also called yam so his her daughter his daughter is called yam yamuna you see this kuntis is kaunteya pandavas so yam and yamuna like that it goes anyway. okay uh, so what is krishna consciousness from where we derive this word that's the from where prabhupad has got this word there has to be some scriptural backup for that because prabhupad never does anything without scriptural backup can you please increase the sound a little bit i'm like no i can't speak hare krishna hare hare krishna hare yeah yeah no it's okay yeah, i got it <laughs> okay so uh let's see from where this word is derived This is one the Prabhupada has written one book in the search of ultimate goal of life. You know this book? It's in folio. It's not much famous. In the search of ultimate goal of life. And that Prabhupada quotes this verse. It's not just this book, but Prabhupada has all over quoted this verse in his conversations, his letters and his books. But this verse is derived from Padyavali. Prabhupada quotes in the book Ultimate Search Search for Ultimate Goal of Life. from the book padyavali verse number 14 which is written by rupa goswami so this verse is quoted from rupa goswami and prabhupad derives the word krishna consciousness from this very verse we know this uh, but let me just explain you 
how Prabhupada explains this. I am not going to give my explanation for this. But the verse says, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi Kriyetam Yadi Koto Apilabhyate Tatra Lolyam Api Ekalam Mulyam Janma Koti Sukrutair Nalabhyate That's the verse. It's a beautiful verse. In fact, this verse is commented by so many of our charges. Balde Vidya Bhushan, he gives a commentary on this verse, by the way. Uh, yeah. Krishna's Kaviraju Swami, he gives a commentary on this in his book. Uh, what's that? Oh, he writes a commentary on Bilmangla Thakur's work, Krishna's Kaviraju Swami. And in that commentary, he quotes this verse. And some beautiful verse. And what this means is, the Krishna consciousness term is coming from those two words which I have put in red. Krishna Bhakti Bhavita Matihi. Krishna Bhakti means Krishna, but then Bhakti is added, but then you have to define Bhakti. What's Bhakti all about? Uh, that uh, Rupa Goswami says Bhavita Matihi. Bhavita, Bhav means, Mati means consciousness. Mati means consciousness. Bhavita, Mati actually means mind. Bhavita means a mind which is imbued. Imbued? Do you understand? Imbued? A mind which is absorbed in Krishna Bhakti. So, mind which is absorbed in Krishna Bhakti, that is called as Krishna Consciousness. Consciousness is not just thinking of Krishna. That's the idea there. It's not just thought. It is, it is an absorption in Krishna. That means it's thoughts, feelings and actions, all of them together. That's, that's a broad sense there. It's not just thinking something. No. It goes deeper. It goes deeper, deeper than thoughts. It goes right to the feelings and right down to the feelings, right up to the actions. It, it scales everything. That is Krishna consciousness. And, and there is a term used for this, technical term, which is called as Krishna Maya. You see, Srimati Radharani is called Krishna Maya. And Krishna is called Radha, Radha Maya. Or Radha is called Krishna Maya, that you can say. Radha is absorbed in Krishna and Krishna is absorbed in Radha. Radha Mai Krishna, Krishna Mai, Krishna Mai Radha. That's all. That's that actually Narutam Das Thakur is phrased there. Prabhupada uses this word Krishna Mai. So, Krishna consciousness means every atom of your body is absorbed in Krishna. That's Krishna. Otherwise, Prabhupada would have named this movement Krishna thinking. <laughs> okay, you can do like that. <laughs> Or Krishna action. Or you plat for him. No, it's a very big term. Consciousness also means awareness. Now this Bhavita word is very important. In Sanskrit Bhavita can link can be linked to emotions. Bhav, Bhav, Bhav. From Bhav comes Bhavita. Bhav means also emotions. Uh, Prabhupada translates Bhav word in Gita also as determination. If, if, if you read that word, 10th chapter, 8th verse of Gita. So, what's that verse? You all know that? 10-8. Uh, Aham sarvasse prabhago matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvita. If you see the word to word meaning there, Prabhupada translates buddha as intelligence, but bhava is determination. And this word also carries the import or or let's say connotations, you know, denotations, connotations. The import, the subtle sense of determination. So Krishna consciousness also means determined to attain Krishna. That's so so I'm I'm giving you the the whole paradigm of consciousness. It's not limited just to do something for Krishna. You see the point? And consciousness also means awareness. You have to be aware of Krishna. Now, what do you mean by becoming aware of Krishna? I will explain in a few moments. But this is a sense of awareness. It's not just what we are doing, but actually how we are doing and why we are doing. That's more important. It's not just what we are doing. How we are doing that thing, how we are executing it, what we want to execute, what we want to do, and why we are doing. These things are the important consciousness. And that is awareness. You are aware of what's going all around you. That's the idea. You are aware... Um, okay, fine. Uh, so, uh, 
So you just wait for a minute, I'll explain this word aware. Keep it in your mind, I'll come to this point back. Okay, so Prabhupada explains this verse. How does Prabhupada explain this verse? It's a beautiful explanation and and I'll tell you how about Prabhupada does. Prabhupada just explains in a very practical way. And every Acharya, they have given a meaning in a very different way. Prabhupada, but Prabhupada takes a practical Now, before going to Prabhupada, let me just tell you. What this verse means is Krishna Bhakti Ras Bhaveta Mati. That is Krishna consciousness. So, Rupa Goswami says, uh, Kriyatam. Kriyatam means if you want to do Krishna consciousness. Okay, if you want to do Krishna consciousness, then what? Kriyatam. Kriya means do. Yadi Kuto Api. Yadi means if. Kuto means if somehow. Labhyate. If you get this Krishna consciousness. Now you want to practice Krishna consciousness, so you want it, isn't it? So Rupa Goswami says, okay, if you get this, Labhyate, Kuto Api, somewhere. Anywhere if you get this, any shop, then you just buy it, take it. But then there is a price of everything. In material world, nothing is for free, isn't it? So what's the price? Tatra lolyam. The price, tatra means that, there. In the shop, the price will be written. What's the price? Lolyam. Lolyam means, anybody can tell? Yeah, lolyam in Sanskrit means greed. Greed, you should have a greed to attain that. Now, now mark the, the meaning of this word greed. Prabhupada will change the meaning of this. Not, uh, he, he will give a practical meaning of greed. You should have greed for attaining Krishna consciousness. Api mulyam, that's the only mulyam. Mulyam means the price. The only ekam means that's the only price. You can practice Krishna consciousness for millions of years, but if you don't have a greed, to attain Krishna, you will never attain Him. You don't have them. But practice of Krishna consciousness will, will bring that greed. Now that's the idea there. If you practice sincerely and properly, with a proper understanding, in association of good devotees, that's the expected thing there. Greed. So, Janma Koti That's what Rupa Goswami says. Janma Koti, millions of lives, even if you practice, whatever you are doing, if you don't have that greed, you don't attain Krishna. That's all. So how to get that greed? Well, this is a process, isn't it? This is a process. This is what we are looking for when we are practicing Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada says in Gita, in Bhagavad Gita Purport, 10th chapter, 9th verse. He says, first a devotee is attached to service and gradually he becomes attached to Krishna. To the person whom he is serving. You see? And you know what? Most of us now are attached to service. Or well, not exactly to Krishna. To whom we are serving. And we have a proof for that. All of us. And how do we prove it? How do we prove to ourselves? Forget others. That we are attached to service. But not as much as to the person whom we are serving. How do we prove this? Yeah. Just, 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 he, he lifted his hand. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> okay, okay, you can say that. You can say that. But let me say it's not a little a proof because everybody has different likings also, isn't it? Uh, within services, somebody likes book distribution, somebody likes preaching, somebody likes prasadam distribution. That's okay because we are different. So that might be a little confusing. What's ultimate evidence that we are more attached to service than Krishna? You all know this answer. When I'll tell you. Okay. If, if Anybody? If we are not successful in our service, no. we might get... No, no. You might not be successful. Huh? And that's okay. Not... Oh, frustration you're talking about? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, well, all these things are there. Ultimate test is chanting. Chanting. You are chanting but your mind is not on Krishna. So you see the point? We are serving Krishna day after day. We are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 24 hours. But our mind is not on Him. What's happening? We are crazy or what? <laughs> it seems we are insane actually. 
We can't remember him. We, you chant anybody's name in this world, you'll start remembering him, isn't it? You say Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you immediately start remembering. You know Arnold Schwarzenegger? You know, here he is famous. How do you pronounce him? Schwarzenegger. Oh, you, you chant anything, you chant anything. You, chant, you say Trump, 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 it will just come in your mind. Okay. <laughs> but what about Krishna? Krishna, 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 nothing. It's, we are absolutely mad. That's what Bhagavatam says. Noonam pramattaha. We are in an insanity condition. And that's the evidence. We are attached to service, but not exactly to the person. We were attached to the person, then immediately when we chant Krishna, his form, qualities, pastimes will come in our mind. Will flood our mind. And that's what Prabhupada says. That's what we are looking for. Prabhupada says, first we are attached to service, and gradually if we do service in a proper consciousness, with proper understanding, then we will become attached to Krishna. And the day we become attached to Krishna, he will reveal himself to us. But that transition is difficult. That transition from service to him, to that person, that's a difficult thing. For that you need a proper attitude. To serve, you need action. But to become attached, you need attitude. And Prabhupada says in Nectar of Instruction, Introduction, Prabhupada says, attitude is a key of Krishna consciousness. Remember this line always, attitude is a key. So action means what? Attitude means why and how. The intention of that action that you have to keep in your mind. And and this is what that's why Prabhupada says, Janma Koti Labhyate. It might take a lot of time if you're not in a proper attitude to attain Krishna because you don't get developed attachment to him. If you're doing something and something and keep on doing. And that's why you have we have seen in his con history many devotees after many years they fall down. Why? They're sincere, they are okay, they are doing things, but they don't really focus on the attitude of the Krishna consciousness. So after, after many years they lose interest or whatever happens, their mind gets disturbed and they go away. And they know that. They will understand that time, oh, I, I didn't really go deep in Prabhupada's books. That's why my mind is disturbed or I didn't really focus on the attitude. So Prabhupada's books will help you to bring that attitude. That's the role of reading there of Prabhupada's books. Okay. So this is the whole dimension of Krishna consciousness. But now I will explain how Prabhupada explains this. Now remember, I told you, so what's the meaning of lolium? Greed. Greed. Okay. Greed to become attached to Krishna. Greed for Krishna. That is a literal translation of all the acharyas and scholars. But Prabhupada translates lolium in a very different way. And a very practical way because greed, okay. How do we practically relate to greed? You should have greed for Krishna. Now, what does that mean for us? What should I do now? I should become hungry or what should I do? Prabhupada gives a very beautiful explanation and this is his explanation. He explains in morning walk. You see, Prabhupada casually explains such a deep concept. It's not book. In book you have to sit and write. You're thinking as a writer. He's just talking. And this shows he's a self-realized person. He's not an ordinary man just talking something. So Prabhupada says, you know, you see, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati Kriyeta Medi Kudopilabhyate the anxiety for Krishna, if it can be purchased, immediately purchase it. Prabhupada translates lolyam not as greed but anxiety. That's a very different take. Whole Krishna consciousness process is to purchase that anxiety. If any service is making you anxious to do that service more, take that anxiety. The more you collect anxiety, the more you advance. For Krishna. That is the price. And the day you become 100% anxious, like Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, Prabhupada couldn't sit idle, you know. He's always talking, preaching, and Prabhupada says, Prabhupada said, I get bored very easily. <laughs> There's no preaching and no program. He was always talking, always translating. He was super full of anxiety. That's what we have to collect. We are here to collect anxiety. And you start developing it. You start putting yourself for the service and that, that much you advance. The more you are anxious for Krishna, the less you are anxious for this material world. You see? You see, uh, in Bhagavad Gita there is a verse. You know that? By experiencing higher taste, leave the... You know that, no? So what's that verse? Um, 
रसवर्जम रसोपियस से परम दृष्टवाने वर्तते नो व्हाट इज दैट हायर टेस्ट नो दैट हायर टेस्ट इज ओके बाय एक्सपीरियंसिंग हायर लव यू लीव द लोअर लव बाय एक्सपीरियंसिंग हायर प्रॉब्लम्स यू लीव लोअर प्रॉब्लम्स there's a taste in higher problems also you know that there's a taste in that and uh, and there's a simple example suppose suppose suppo- suppose you're walking on the road and there's a nail and it goes into your foot full full inside and it's bending a lot it's bleeding and suddenly you get a phone call and the phone call says your mother is dead like she didn't die like that your house was on fire she was burned alive Will you remember that wound? You'll just you'll just take a cloth, tie it, and just run to your house. What's hurt happened? You know. So higher problems will allow you, will make you uh, forget lower problems, and that's why it's that is the role of problems in Krishna consciousness. That's why we focus. If you focus on the problem of birth and death, you forget all these petty problems of this material world. But we have to get the taste of that problem. we should like that concept of birth and death as like philosophers yes that is the problem if you start liking that problem then you forget all these small problems ah, there's this temple this disturbance of in that there's this stuff and then get prasad this devotee saying something this power eh, forget it you have to get out of birth and death that is the problem but for that you have to have a taste isn't it <laughs> if you have a taste then you forget lower problems if you just think then you can't get over normal problems so that's why consciousness is not just thinking it's 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 a broad term of taste and awareness you're aware of that problem now you see the concept of consciousness consciousness word is always linked to awareness even in science even in psychology even in psychiatry consciousness word is not linked to thinking thinking is a function of mind function of consciousness is awareness if you if so if you want to pinpoint it so you have to be aware of this problem awareness means 24 hours you know this is the the problem it's not just thinking when you're reading or you're talking or you're doing something that's the idea so prabhupad says if you want to this is our prashad in krishna consciousness anxiety just fill your stomach with anxiety if if you have to eat something eat anxiety build it slowly years after years you have to get up to a point of anxiety that without serving krishna you will die that's the point without serving krishna you will bored and that is that will lead you to love and separation that that will that will lead you that anxiety will lead you to attachment attachment then will make a transition to separation isn't it where are you krishna is how should i serve you this is this is that prabhupad translation is excellent here when prabhupada says rupa go swami said krishna bhakti rasa bhavitam ati kriyatam just for say purchase krishna anxiety if it is available somewhere so the next question will be that what is the price tatra lolyam api molyam ekalam the anxiety can be purchased by anxiety see that it's a beautiful line you say i don't have anxiety to so krishna what to do prabhupada says that anxiety can be purchased by anxiety start start doing some service which puts you in anxiety that's all you have to put yourself in that willfully and then you develop anxiety is it so there's so there's a pressure you have to put yourself in some pressure in krishna consciousness that's why prabhupas says the leader prabhupas says in uh, prabhupas says in one of his lectures and that's very important lecture the leaders should make sure that should that they should give fresh challenges to the devotees challenge like it should not be a routine krishna consciousness they should give challenges so that they develop they have anxieties to fulfill that challenge and then this anxiety will lead to more anxiety then they advance isn't it otherwise it becomes boring that's the duty of a leader to give challenges to think of some challenge okay fine for example marathon marathon is a challenge isn't book book marathon okay this is a goal this is a mark you distribute go that's a good challenge so if leader has to think of various projects which will give challenges to devotee this will give them anxiety and make their krishna consciousness fresh 
otherwise it will become boring and stale and then empty mind, empty mind is devil's mind. And then there is politics and lust and enviousness, you get mad. And I've seen, I've seen the temples which are vibrant. <coughs> How they're vibrant? Because they have so many projects and challenges. You see any temple which is vibrant, the leader creates so many projects and challenges and the leader explains the other person what is a challenge. That's what's also important. Uh, sometimes it happens, you know, leader has in his own mind project. He knows, okay, this is a challenge, but nobody can understand what's happening. They're just doing something. You, you see the point there? He has to explain them and give them that challenge to them and let them fulfill it. Leave them. Let them do mistakes, no problem. But let them do something. That, that's the idea all about. Prabhupada says, this is very nice. The anxiety can be purchased by anxiety. So I'll do it. Uh, so you might think, okay, we'll do it. But Prabhupada says, no. You don't get the anxiety very easily. Janma Koti Sukruti Pilabhita. That anxiety is not available even by millions of births. So this anxiety is not easy. You have to develop slowly day after day, day after day, day after day, day after day. <coughs> so put yourself in a service which gives you some anxiety. Don't do some service which is, okay, easy. Oh, that you can do if you like it. No problem. If it is required, you have to do in the temple. If it is required, you have to do that. But don't hesitate to do some service which will put you in anxiety. That's also that idea. Okay, this service is putting me anxiety. No, 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 I, I'm not peaceful. No, don't worry about that. That's good for you. Do it. And the wealth in that service is anxiety. From which you were hesitating. That's your wealth. And we are purposefully getting away from that wealth. No, that's not a good idea. That's Krishna consciousness. It's a very different understanding of Krishna consciousness, but Prabhupada gives it. That was the difference between Prabhupada and all the Gaudiya Mat, his god brothers. His God brothers could, of course, I am not saying all God brothers were like, they were nice Prabhupada God brothers, Bhakti Krishna Maharaj, Kesha Pagya Maharaj, but most of them couldn't really understand the practical aspect of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada understood that. And Prabhupada gave this to others, and that's why you have this movement, that's why you have so many pure devotees. And if we understand this, then we can advance, otherwise, we'll definitely fall down to illusion. We'll, we'll fall down. If you're not anxious for Krishna, you'll be anxious for material world. There's just two options. There is no third option there. There is nothing. Okay. So, uh, having said that, Prabhupada has defined Krishna consciousness in many ways also. This is the ultimate definition of Krishna consciousness. This is like, okay, if you want to Krishna consciousness, have anxiety. But then what is Krishna consciousness? That is the idea. Isn't it? We were talking, if you want to be Krishna consciousness, be anxious. But then what is Krishna Consciousness? So I told you, Krishna Consciousness means thinking, feeling, willing, awareness. There are so many definitions. Prabhupada gave many definitions of Krishna Consciousness in many of his lectures. Different perspectives, you see. So don't get confused when Prabhupada says Krishna Consciousness means... Or once, once devotee asks, Prabhupada, what is Krishna Consciousness? Prabhupada says, book distribution. And then other time they ask, Prabhupada, what is Krishna Consciousness? Prabhupada says, Govindas. <laughs> And then one says, Prabhupada, what is Krishna? Mahaj? Prabhupada says, reading Bhagavad Gita. And then, uh, so and then I think uh, Satsuru Maharaj, he's, he's recounting this past time. And then Prabhupada was going in morning walk. And then, uh, then Prabhupada asked to them, what is Krishna consciousness? And Satsuru Maharaj, you know, he remembered the answer. And he said, Prabhupada, reading Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada says, no. <laughs> was as preaching. You see, Prabhupada says many things and we can get confused. All definitions are correct, but they are different perspectives on the same thing. So you have to take all definitions, put them together and get a holistic view. Otherwise, we get confused. Like for example, if I ask uh, about Mercedes. So what is Mercedes? You might say Mercedes. Then I ask, okay, what is Mercedes? To a child, he's a car. If I ask to an engineer, what is Mercedes? Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes Benz. And uh, so, and if an engineer you ask what is Mercedes, he'll say it's an automobile engine. Different definitions, what to do. If you ask uh, 
a romantic couple. What is Mercedes? And they'll say, it's my dream, isn't it? <laughs> well, what do you do? What do you, it's a different definitions, but all definitions are correct. If you put all definitions, then you understand exactly what is this thing we are talking about. So Prabhupada gives many definitions, you have to put them together. That's what you have to do. And I'll show you how. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yes. so before that, before that, uh, before that, just hang for a moment. Krishna consciousness has three levels. Now, I, so I told you, consciousness means awareness, but for all practical purposes, I will use the word thinking. Let's use the word thinking, not just awareness. If, I, I can't say be aware of Krishna, it doesn't click, you know. So I will use this word thinking. Krishna consciousness begins from thinking of Krishna, isn't it? Krishna consciousness. You're conscious of Krishna, you're thinking of Krishna. That's the first level. But then when you advance and you're sincere, what will happen is, you will start thinking what Krishna is thinking. That is also Krishna consciousness. To be conscious of what Krishna is conscious. That is also Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada says in his purpose, Prabhupada doesn't say this line. But if you read, you can understand. Prabhupada says, Prabhupada says, Krishna is thinking about his pure devotees, isn't it? Krishna is thinking about Radha. We all know in his purpose. Krishna is thinking about Yashodama, Anand Baba, in Vrindavan, he is enjoying pastimes. He is thinking about his devotees. So, thinking what Krishna is thinking, that is the next level. A neophyte is at that level, thinking of Krishna. I will do for Krishna this, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. But well, when you come at Madhya Madhikari level or advance, you start thinking what he is thinking. It's not just limited to I then. A neophyte is limited to I and me. But when you go higher, you start thinking how Krishna is thinking about Radharani. How think, uh, Krishna is thinking about Prabhupada. How, what he is thinking actually. Krishna consciousness is not really about I. Krishna consciousness is not absolutely about us. That's the idea. You have to shift the focus. And when you advance more and more, and you become topmost devotee Uttam Madhikari. You know what's the... So what is after this? Can anybody guess? <coughs> hmm? the, the third dimension of Krishna consciousness, the third meaning. Then you can, you can serve Krishna by knowing what he wants. Yeah, so, so that's it. Thinking what Krishna is thinking. If you, if you know, if you think, you can think what Krishna is thinking. Then you can serve, be creative, come with plans, isn't it? It's nice. But if you're simply thinking what about Krishna, then you can't be creative. You can't come with plans, isn't it? You don't know like what's happening. What Krishna exactly exactly wants from me, isn't it? The neophytes they don't know what Krishna exactly wants. But Madhya Madhikari, by his knowledge, he can understand you know. What exactly he wants, what exactly he is thinking. But the Uttam Adhikari, he is much beyond what we can think. If you also advance, you will start thinking what Krishna is thinking about me. And that's the ultimate perfection of spiritual life. Prabhupada says this in one of his lecture. By the way. You can think what Krishna is thinking about me. And if you read Prabhupada's books and letters, it's all, all there. Prabhupada doesn't paraphrase this line, but it's all there. Because you might have read Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada says, Prabhupada, you might have heard this, Prabhupada says, Krishna just wants to see how much sincere you are. You have heard this? Prabhupada says so many times. Krishna wants to see how much determined you are in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada also says, Krishna is waiting for you. Go back. So what's that all about? Krishna is waiting for you. What's that? We are thinking what Krishna is thinking about? Me. Krishna wants to see you, when you will become sincere. Krishna is thinking about me. So, you see, whole shift. A neophyte is thinking of Krishna. That means he is, think, he is seeing Krishna from his perspective. You see? You see the idea? I am thinking about Krishna, so I am seeing him from my perspective. But at the Uttam Adhikari level, he is thinking what Krishna is thinking. He is seeing the whole scenario from Krishna's perspective. He is seeing how Krishna is seeing him. And that is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. That we have to practice. If you can practice that, your life is perfect. Then you never fall down. 
And there's a beautiful example for this. This example in Mahabharat. This Bhima, Bhima, Bhim. He couldn't fast because his name is Vrikodara. He's like, he's eating a lot. So you know this name from Bhagavad Gita, Vrikodara? Yeah. It's a, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So and you know how much he used to eat? In, in breakfast, he used to drink two tons of milk. And then he used to eat four tons of bananas. <laughs> and then he used to eat like 100 kilos of rice. And then, and then Pandava said, Pandava saw you and then said, now what's happening, you know? You're eating so much, but your stomach is not even going one inch here and there. It's the same thing. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Where the food is going? And Bhima said, I have, I have this much fire in my stomach. Like for all of us, a fire in stomach is like point. Vaishwanar, Vaishwanar. Bhima has this, this big fire. Bhima says, I can digest entire universe by this fire. What to say of this food? There's nothing. <laughs> this is a sample. <laughs> I'm doing this. So I'm limiting myself of eating so that you don't become afraid, you know. <laughs> I can eat the entire universe. That's Bhima all about. So he, of course, he couldn't fast. So, so then, so then Krishna, so, yeah, so then Krishna came and he said, okay, fine, you know. So Krishna, so Krishna and Vyasa, they, they come. And they said to Pandavas, okay, so now we should follow Ekadashi. I said, forget it. <laughs> like, uh, so Ekadashi in a real sense, not Ekadashi what we follow. Now, it's a, for, for us, Prabhupada modified Ekadashi, that's okay. But in real sense, Ekadashi has to be followed. Now, if you want to follow exactly scripturally, Ekadashi has to be started on the previous day, 10th day. Ekashi falls on 11th day. Tomorrow is Ekashi. Suppose tomorrow is Ekashi. So today you have to take once, only breakfast. Then you don't take whole day. Then you don't take whole Ekadashi. No water, no food. Break, after breakfast, no water, no food. Then whole Ekadashi you don't take. In Ekadashi you have to stay awake in night. You can't sleep. Because according to scriptures, Ekadashi resides in night and not in day. So if you sleep at night, you break Ekadashi. Ideally, I am talking about ideal things. Don't start doing this now. Uh, Prabhupada didn't really recommend all these things because you will spoil your health. It's a preaching mission. So, it's an ideal situation. So, uh, then you can't sleep. And the next day, Dwadashi, uh, you have to skip your breakfast, but then take lunch. And then light. Light lunch. Once. Once. Not twice. You can't eat twice. And then on Trayodashi you start normal mechanism. That is Ekadashi. Real sense according to Hari Bhakti Vilas. But you can't do that. <laughs> you become crazy if you do that. <laughs> you have health problems, you know. <laughs> really? Exactly this? Oh, really? That's good. <laughs> huh? Simultaneously. Okay, that's if you can do, that's the best. Nothing like it. We don't say no. Prabhupada says if you can follow with strictness rules without becoming sick and without hampering your service, no problem, go ahead. If your service has hampered, health is hampered, then stop. Because different bodies, different limits, different abilities, no problem. If you can increase, good. It's, it's applaudable, not bad. So, what's his age? Oh really? Then that's a commendable thing. <laughs> Such a old age thing. Okay, good. Not a big problem. Okay, so uh, that's the idea. But the point is, Bhima said, I can't do. It's impossible. I can't do this. So Krishna says, okay, fine. Krishna says, now you do one Ekadashi, Nirjal Ekadashi. Nirjal Ekadashi is also Bhima Ekadashi, no? You know that? Okay, you do one Ekadashi without water. That's all. And you're done. All Ekadashi benefits you will get. But that was for Bhima, not exactly for us. You can't say, I'll follow Bhima Ekadashi and get benefit of all. That, that's not the idea. No Acharyas say like this. But it's for Bhima special concession. So he got this and then, uh, okay, fine, he was thinking, okay, I'll do Ekadashi, I'll do. So he was thinking of Krishna, isn't it? 
Mm-hmm. Now Krishna said me I'll do Ekadashi, so I'll do okay fine. But then he and then by afternoon he was very thirsty. Okay. He couldn't control. So what he did, he came up with a plan. He said, I'll go to Yamuna, take a bath, okay. I'll dip and then when I'm inside, I'll drink water, nobody will know. <laughs> and then it's done. <laughs> so he went to Yamuna and he just he just dip and he was about to Krishna came there. Stop! <laughs> I am thinking about you. I am seeing you what you are doing. Don't think I am not seeing you. But the problem with Bhima was he forgot the third point. He remember the first point. He was thinking about Krishna and his orders. But he forgot the third point. What Krishna is thinking about him. And that's why he created such plans of sense gratification. You see? You see? He fell into sense gratification. Of course, it's a, it's a pastime of Bhima to teach us. Like, we can't say he fell down. But that's the idea. If you forget what Krishna is thinking about, if you forget Krishna is seeing you and planning for you, we will, their chances will fall into sense gratification. We'll start creating plans for that. Our mind will not be fixed. If you always remember Krishna is thinking about me, you, you don't know exactly what he's thinking, but he's thinking about you. If you can remember this point, then your mind will be strict and it will not become loose so easily. It will not become loose because you, are, you know you are in continuous watch, isn't it? So when you are alone in your house, you can do anything you like, isn't it? Like you do, and especially in bathroom, you know, you are like totally free. You sing, you do, you do whatever you want and because you are totally alone. But when you are sitting here and somebody is watching you, we are conscious, we are aware and we can't do everything what we like isn't it? there's a restriction because there's a watch so if we can think Krishna is watching us there will be restriction on our mind we will not do sense gratification so easily and that's the idea that is this implication of this point but this practice will come slowly and slowly and slowly and then at higher levels you can then you will be able to understand what exactly he's thinking now we can just think he's thinking about me, but exactly what he's thinking, that's at Uttam Adhikari level when Krishna starts interacting with you. Okay, I'm happy with you. He'll say to you, I want you to do this. Bhakti Siyanta used to talk with Krishna. You know this? Bhakti Siyanta once, uh, uh, yeah, Bhakti Siyanta Saraswati, Thakur. Uh, so he had this mat in, uh, so in Mayapur, Gaudiya mat, his mat. His mat is there, his temple. Uh, so he established the deities Gandhar Gandharvika. His deities. So once he went inside the deity room, he sat, closed the door, and he came out. And he said to his devotees, uh, so, so, so his devotees were, 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 all these devotees, they were arranging a function, big function. It was arranged in a hall inside, big hall. And he came outside and he said, I want a pandal to be fixed. And the function is going to be started within five minutes. And it's impossible. It is like crazy plan. In five minutes, people are going to come. Function is going to start at start, for example, nine o'clock. At eight fifty-five, Bhakti Sandra says, "We will not have function inside. We will have outside put up and down." <laughs> then one of the disciples he asked, "Why are you saying this? You know, it's like he said. Well, it's not my fault. Radharani just told me." <laughs> she is saying this now it's up to you <laughs> this is Uttam Adhikari they exactly they don't just think the Krishna is thinking about them but they exactly know what they are thinking about them that's a high level but we can start from here so remember all these three points Krishna consciousness is not just limited to thinking of Krishna it's not just about our perspective it's about his perspective on us it's about his take on us it's not our take on him because that is that is in one sense lust and not exactly love. Okay, you understand that's Krishna consciousness, three levels of Krishna consciousness. Uh, and that is why Bhakti Srihanta he explained Krishna consciousness in three words. Just three words. This is the slogan written on Gaudiya Mat walls. He used to give lectures again and again on this. He said Krishna consciousness is Krishna Kam, Krishna Nam, Krishna Dham. Always remember this. This is very important. He said this is what is Krishna consciousness. Krishna Nam means? You understand Krishna Nam? 
Krishna Kam. Krishna Kam means doing service for Krishna. Krishna Nam means chanting his holy name. And Krishna Dham means what? Huh? Not exactly temple, yeah, but yeah, okay, fine. Temple, can you qualify? Not exactly temple. Holy place. Hmm? Huh? Not exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not holy. Association of devotees, Krishna Dham. Because holy place is a holy place by devotees. Otherwise, it's a place for crows and cows and donkeys, Sukhdeva Swami says. A temple is a building if there is no association of devotees. What's the use of this? An association of devotees means knowledge. There's no purpose of association of devotees if we don't exchange knowledge. Then it's a party. We have a party. An exchange of knowledge means books. If you don't have books, what do you exchange? You're exchanging speculation. So Krishna Dham means reading Prabhupada books. That's the idea. So Bhakti Santa says these three always remember Krishna consciousness these three things. You can't delete any one of them. You can't lessen your focus on any one of them. All three are important. Chanting, service and reading. And okay, here's a quiz. From where did he get this concept? Is this speculation? There has to be some scriptural evidence. These people are special, you know. They don't speak anything. Okay, this is my realization. No. They have so many realizations, but they'll not say like that. That we say. And I feel for Krishna like this. What's the value of your feeling? You might be feeling okay. But then you have to give some evidence. Prabhupada, all these acharyas, this, they're backing up everything by evidence. It is their realization, but then they, it matches with scriptures, isn't it? So, okay, from where this is coming in scriptures? I'll give you a hint. Okay, from Bhagavad Gita, a hint. You know this verse? But you have to think now of it. <laughs> it's a simple verse. It's not complex. You see the point how Acharyas get the practical application of their, those verses. They take all the practicality of that verses. So no longer theory for them. For us it's theory. For us most of the verses are theory. But they can apply it. That is why they are Acharyas. Is it the ninth chapter? No, no, no. Okay, should I tell? <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's a surprise for you all. This is a verse. 18.5. Gedan tapa karma pavanani manishina. The acts of sacrifice, charity and penance are not to be given up. They must be performed. In its sacrifice, charity and penance purify even great souls. What is the highest sacrifice? Nam Yagya. Isn't it? Chanting. What is the highest charity? <coughs> Service of Krishna. To give Krishna is the highest charity. That's in Mahabharata. Krishna and his devotees. And what is the highest penance? To think about Krishna. Rupa Goswami says, always remember Krishna, never to forget him. That's the highest austerity. And you, have to, you can think if you have knowledge. You have knowledge if you read books. Highest penance is reading Prabhupada books. So, all the three. Krishna Nam, Krishna Kam and Krishna Dham. It right comes from here. And Krishna says it purifies even great souls. We have to follow all these three together. Krishna doesn't say one. Krishna says all these three. Yagya, Dan, Tapa. All these three. And that is why uh, uh, we have to balance between all these three. That's very important. And that, it might take many years to balance them. Because that's what devotees can't figure out. How to balance, you know, in this busy life of Krishna consciousness. Sometimes you're chanting, you leave reading. Sometimes you're reading, chanting goes down. Sometimes you are serving and you're so busy, your mind is tired. You can't read, you can't chant and it all goes hodgepodge. Every day, these three things should go on. Every day. You have to plan your life in such a way. 
almost. If you're Janmashtami or some festivals, then you can't read it. It's impossible. You can't even chant sometimes on those days. You have to complete next day. But don't... Most... All the fall downs in history of ISKCON are due to imbalance in this. That's all. If you fall down, it will be due to imbalance in this. 100%. Anybody anywhere on this planet has fallen from Krishna consciousness is due to imbalance. So balance this, these three things. Give a time for chanting, have a time for reading and your service. And every and uh, so ev- every day you should have a proper quota for all these things. Not just, okay, five minutes reading, no. You should do these three things in such, such a way so that these three things give you satisfaction to that extent, isn't it? So if half an hour reading gives you satisfaction, that's good. For some people, you need to read one hour to give, you know, some substance. For some people, they can get it in half an hour. It depends on your intellectual thing. So, okay, so that amount of time you two should dedicate. The time which will satisfy you, the time which will give you substance, not just a glance. And then we can go whole life, otherwise it will be big chaos in life, in Krishna consciousness. And that's coming from Bhagavad Gita. You see, it's so nice. Krishna says, Yagyadanta Pakar Mahapav Nani Manishan. Okay, and the last slide I'm going to show you. I was talking about Prabhupada says many definitions of Krishna consciousness. I give you example of car, Mercedes Benz. So you have to put all definitions together to get a holistic view of the subject. So Krishna consciousness means awareness. I told you about that. Now I'll bring that concept here. Uh, okay. These are many definitions by Prabhupada, but we have to put them together and then we understand that. Prabhupada says in Path of Perfection, this is one of the book of Prabhupada, chapter 1. Prabhupada says, Krishna consciousness means activity. And that we understand. Okay. Prabhupada so many times says Krishna consciousness action. You don't sit, don't become a lazy fellow, Prabhupada says. Don't become a lazy, crazy fellow. Prabhupada uses this word. Prabhupada uses this word. Uh, Prabhupada says in one of his letters, not to whom, Brahmananda of Hamsadut, Prabhupada writes, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, he says, We don't want lazy, crazy fellows in our temple. <laughs> Prabhupada said that. Because laziness is contagious, you know. One person is lazy, everybody starts becoming like that, isn't it? <laughs> the Prabhupada says. So, yeah, Prabh- Krishna consciousness means action. You are doing so many things. But the problem is, if you have to do action, behind action you should have a desire to do that, isn't it? You can do action on order, but that is not real action. You can do action by force. That's not real action. Action should be by your own will. And that's why Prabhupada defines, gives another definition. Krishna consciousness means to purify the desire. Krishna consciousness means desire. By your own desire, those actions should come. Now, there's a link between desire and action. And this is from, by the way, from Bhagavad Gita again. Uh, action intensifies the desire. Isn't it? If, if we keep on doing something, we will develop more desire for that. So if you want to learn cooking, and if there is nobody to train how to cook, you lose desire, isn't it? And when somebody comes, okay, I will train you, and you start cooking, then you develop more desire, oh nice, I can do that. So action, uh, in the sense, action intensifies desire. And desire... When it increases, it gives enthusiasm for action. So this is this is technically called as the technical words used as action. Um, how do we say? Action gives pushti. You understand pushti to desire, and desire gives tushti to action. Now, that's Sanskrit words. Tushti and pushti. Um, if you can remember, you can. Remember. But I told you English. For that action intensifies desire, desire enthuses action. It goes like that. If you do with a proper desire some action, it will give you satisfaction, isn't it? That's tushti, tushti, satisfaction. If you're doing with force, it doesn't give you satisfaction. If you do from your okay, good, nice, I it. Satisfaction. That's called tushti. And if you do, if you act, it it will nourish the desire. That nourish word is pushti. 
it will nourish the desire and intensify. That's the relationship. That's what Prabhupada says. Krishna consciousness means activity. In other words, in some in Bhagavad Gita he says Krishna conscious. This is lecture. Krishna consciousness means desire. But then Prabhupada adds something. Krishna consciousness means to purify the desire. Now we might have a desire to serve Krishna, but we have so many other desires also. So what to do with that? You have to filter it out, isn't it? Now what's that? That's why Prabhupada defines Krishna consciousness means self-abnegation. This is from Bhagavad Gita 6.10 purport. Self-abnegation means, you know self-abnegation? Uh, self-abnegation means, means denying yourself of some desires. So, purify your desire. You have desire for Krishna and then you have desires from your mind. So, desires from your mind you deny and the desires of Krishna, what you, what you know, what you have to do, that you allow. That is self-abnegation or in other words, renunciation. That's all. Prabhupada says Krishna conscious renunciation. Renunciation of those desires which are hampering service of Krishna. So you are seeing how everything is connected. You see, Prabhupada gives various definitions from different perspective of Krishna conscious, but everything is connected. You have to connect everything. Otherwise, you don't get a music, isn't it? You have one note, another note, another note. That's not music. But then you have to connect these notes. And then you get a music. So that's why it's very important to read all books of Prabhupada and get a holistic view what exactly he's trying to say and then connect it. So to purify desire, we need renunciation. Renunciation means you keep desires of Krishna and say no to all desires which are coming from your mind. But now here is a problem. How do you know which desire is coming from Krishna and which desire is coming from your mind? You don't know. Because it's everything is in box. So, so if prasad comes, you, okay, Krishna says eat prasad. And mind says, yeah, yeah, you have to eat it. <laughs> but then, how do you know that's mind saying or Krishna saying? Mind is saying you have to eat it. But then Krishna also says, don't eat tasty prasad, otherwise you'll be trapped, you know, always if you're taste. So what to do? And then mind says, no, no, it's not a problem. You can take taste for service of Krishna, something. And there's so many voices coming inside. Now, how do you know which voice is Krishna's voice? How do you know that? For that, you have to have knowledge. And that is why Prabhupada says, Krishna conscious means understanding the truth of Krishna, the truth of devotional service, truth of love of God, truth of emotional ecstasy, truth of transcendental mellows, and truth of pastimes of Lord, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Without philosophy, you will never understand which voice is Krishna's. If you understand knowledge, see, all of us, Krishna speaks to us. Krishna speaks by inspiration. <laughs> But because we are too involved, materialistic people, they have no idea. So they can't filter out things. And it, it happens with all of us, isn't it? It happens with all of us. There's a voice. But we are not trained to hear that voice. So philosophy will help, help you to filter. Okay, this voice is Krishna's. This is my mental voice. And, and how do you know? By knowledge. Okay. We read in scriptures. Uh, okay. You should not enjoy prasad. So any thought which is coming in mind, enjoy prasad, that's coming from mind. You know that. Because Krishna says you should not enjoy it. And if, if any thought coming from inside is coming is enjoy prasad or it's tasty, eat it, then they, you're sure it's coming from mind. So knowledge is a parameter to filter out many voices. Isn't it? Knowledge is a parameter. Otherwise you're confused. And and that happens, you know. Because we don't have knowledge, that's when now we, now, now, now we need guide. Isn't it? We need spiritual master. We have a problem, confusion. We go and ask. Uh, uh, so, my dear master, what's the solution? Please tell me. He is able to tell you solution. How? He is not a magician. Because he has knowledge. He hears you. He hears your thoughts. This thought, this thought, this thought, this thought. He has knowledge of scripture. He matches with that. And, okay, this is a thought. Leave all this. You do this. Simple. It's as simple as that. And if you have yourself knowledge, yourself become efficient in that. 
So that's the idea. Well, Prabhupada says Krishna conscious means philosophy. So there's so many definitions, but every definition is linked to each other. You see the point? Krishna conscious means action. For action, you need desire, but you have to keep desire pure. So Prabhupada says Krishna conscious means purified desire. But how do you keep yourself pure? By renunciation, by renouncing all nonsense desires. But then how do you renounce nonsense desires? You have to know what is nonsense, what is what makes sense. That comes with knowledge. Simple. So, and there are so many other definitions Prabhupada is giving. So, do this homework. Go to Folio, type Krishna Consciousness, get all the definitions. It's a good project. Put it, put it together. One, two, three, four. Keep on linking. And then you get a whole view of Krishna Consciousness. I, I just showed you a sample. Prabhupada also says, I told you Krishna Consciousness means propaganda. Prabhupada says on the other day, versus Krishna Consciousness means preaching. So, you have to link every one of them. And then you get a very nice picture. What is Krishna Consciousness? What is Krishna Consciousness from Krishna's perspective? But if you have half knowledge, then you know what is Krishna Consciousness from your perspective and that is wrong. And you can't practice properly. So that is about Krishna Consciousness, the origin of this word Krishna Consciousness, the meaning of this word, the implications and the whole dimension of this word Consciousness. And this is called awareness. See? If you join everything, that is called awareness of Krishna. If you just simply think, okay, Krishna consciousness means action, okay. Krishna consciousness means desire, okay. But when you link everything, then you are aware of Krishna, Krishna, isn't it? So that's consciousness, awareness. You don't miss any point. It's all linked in you. And then you play all notes. And then there is a music. And then Krishna likes your service. That's symphony. You have to, Bhakti Santa said, you have to produce symphony and not just notes. And for that, you should be expert. And that is what is Krishna conscious? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada ki? Any questions, any comments? I'm done. I have a question. <coughs> Regarding this uh, last uh, aspect of uh, being Christian conscious, uh, first, uh, uh, we think about Christian from our perspective <coughs> uh, and uh, the Uttama. Uh, Thinks from his perspective. Uh, is, yeah, thinking uh, uh, from, from his mm. perspective. Now, uh, uh, many times we have evidence from our Acharyas that uh, uh, they, uh, they are uh, somehow don't want that Krishna bothers too much with them. So, that uh, okay, they are yeah. not so much. And, and one of definition with which our Acharya gives about Uttama Dikari, the one who is preoccupied with how to spread Krishna consciousness. That's uh, his obsession. So, no, he doesn't deal with I understand, I understand. You know, no, no, but... But that understanding, when Acharya says we don't want Krishna to bother about us, that is limited to a material necessities. We don't want Krishna to bother about a material necessities. We'll figure that out ourselves. As far as spiritual life, he is already thinking about us. Even if we don't want him, he is thinking about us. He is thinking about us. We don't want him specially to think about us. But then he is thinking something about us. And that's what Uttamadhikari can figure out. And that is love, that is reciprocation. If he doesn't think about us, then there is no reciprocation. I am thinking he is not thinking. You see the point? That's how it goes. But can we know now what he is thinking about us? Is there a way? I mean, if I go to my spiritual... Yeah, we can know. Yeah, Prabhupada says in Krishna is thinking... Krishna is thinking, please become sincere, isn't it? <laughs> Prabhupada says, Krishna is waiting for us to become sincere. Krishna is thinking, when this soul will come back to me? When you will come back to me? When you lose? When you when you leave sense gratification? This is a very general kind of thinking. But specific when you have a relationship with him. We don't know about that. We don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, 
ultimately a matter of sincerity because I, I Purusha Prabhu once said every, everything what comes in the mind is given from Paramatma. It's only not everything, I, come on. Yeah, yeah not said, everything. but everything intermediary is Paramatma. Of course. Gives, he gives everything. But according to the desire, yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you want, yeah. you will get yeah. the But you know what sincerity word is very abstract. I don't use yeah, this word. Okay, I know. I don't use this word because be sincere, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. So listen here, you know. So that's... that's but can you once again tell... Oh, I, 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 no, wait, 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 I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you about this thing. Yeah. Uh, once, once devotees gave Prabhupada's Bhagavatam, yeah. one Bhagavatam, like newly printed, yeah. Prabhupada took it, he opened and yeah. that binding fell down. Yeah. Like just came apart. Yeah. <laughs> and devotees were like... <gasps> Like they just offered him and binding came out. And Prabhupada, 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 then, uh, so I think Brahmanand Swami, he was sitting. And he said, Prabhupada, sorry, you know. Uh, Prabhupada said, okay, Prabhupada said, no problem. But the next time you should be doing nicely. So what do you need it to do it nicely? Brahmanand Swami said, sincerity. Prabhupada says, no. Prabhupada says, yes, yeah, sincerity, but more than that, you need intelligence. <laughs> Prabhupada always had a practical take for that. It's a word, sincere, but then you have to explain, you know, have to put it, so that's the idea. That's, all. that's my personal thing. Anyway, yeah, Jagannath, we want to ask. So, at the beginning, we were saying about the anxiety, and that this makes us advanced. This makes us what? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, for instance, we would just go and to the Jaipur for a temple in, I don't know, the Middle East or something. That should be not like. Yeah, super anxiety, yeah. <laughs> but you should take anxiety by the level of your adhikar. That's very important. If we, if we take super anxiety, we'll just be crushed. No, that you have to know yourself. There's no pattern. You can know yourself. If you take anxiety to the level which is which is making you frustrated and depressed and taking you down, don't go. That's not a level. If you're taking anxiety which will make you more enthusiastic and challenging and happy, take that much. And then increase little by little. That, that's a good question, by the way. That's how you have to figure out. Are you crushed? Okay, go to... Saudi Arabia. <laughs> What's happening? You'll just be in fear and you go crazy. But we have to increase that. We have to increment. Increment, you know this word? Increment it slowly, slowly by increasing your adhikar. You have to also increase your adhikar by sincere, by Krishna Kam, Krishna Nam, Krishna Dham. By this, by balance, you increase your adhikar. And then you have more power to take anxiety. And then you take it and then go forward, forward, forward. Right. Okay, so that's it. Hare Krishna. Shiva Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna.